At the Roselle Center for Healing, we care about your health and want to help you take your health in a new direction, far from drugs and surgery. Knowledge is the key to optimal wellness and control of your health. We offer free health education on chronic health conditions and natural integrative medicine treatments. Attend Chronic Pain Management on Wednesday, September 7th at 7 p.m. Space is limited, so register today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit rosellecare.com. That's rosellecare.com. Attend Ageless Health 2016, maximizing the fountain of your youth. Live without pain and finally restore your physical capacity. Join radio personality and author Dr. Tom Roselle, DC and guest speakers at Ageless Health 2016 on Thursday, October 13th at the Angelica Film Center, Mosaic in Fairfax, Virginia. Learn why Ageless Health is the most effective way to create a lifelong health care plan that will change your life forever. For event details and early bird registration, call 703-698-7117 or visit agelesshealth2016.com. The information provided on Dr. Tom Rosell Live by Dr. Tom Rosell DC, interview guests, show co-hosts, or substitute hosts is not intended or implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. It is for general information purposes only. Information from this broadcast should not replace the appropriate consultation and examination process by a licensed physician. Always consult your own physician prior to changing any current medical directive or prescription. Dr. Tom Rosell Live, right now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. And welcome to Dr. Tom Rizal Live. This is Live in Studio, and we are here to take your questions and comments and talk about how health can be a better option for you if it's holistic instead of drugs and surgery. Uh, as you could tell, Dr. Rizal is not in studio today. This is Stephanie Pina, licensed acupuncturist and naturopathic physician, and I'm filling in for the next two weeks while Dr. Rizal has a well-needed vacation and basically, we're going to have some great guests on you. And I'm really excited about today's show because we're crossing the border. Um, we're going to have a good friend of mine call in and we're going to talk about acupuncture and its effect on the body and especially fertility. And I want everyone to remember, too, when we're talking about fertility, you know, it's that hormone balance. And essentially, this can apply to a lot of other different health conditions as well, too. So even if you're not looking to have a child, you know someone else who might have a child, um, there's a lot of great information that you're going to hear um, with my speaker, Dr. Lauren Brown. And Dr. Brown, let me just tell you real quick, is a doctor of traditional Chinese medicine, and he's practicing out of Vancouver, British Columbia at AccuBalance uh, Wellness Center. It's the first traditional Chinese medicine clinic in British Columbia de- dedicated to reproductive health and fertility. And uh, Dr. Brown, are you there? I am, and thanks for having me on the show today, Stephanie. Oh, I'm excited. Like like I said, it's it's exciting to have people call in, and we can ask as many questions as we want and, uh, you know, talk, chat, and go from there. And we've gone international, right? We have. I don't <laughs> I don't know if Dr. Rizal has done this, so this might be a new one for the show. So I'm just going to take all the credit on that one. So, <laughs> so um, um, Lauren, why don't you um, tell everyone, I think it's interesting how you originally got into practicing acupuncture and the specialty that you did, because we see a lot of different holistic practitioners get into holistic medicine for a lot of different reasons, and I think that really helps to boost why why they stay in practice, why they treat the patients they do. So what's a little bit of your background story? Yeah, I'll give a real, the short version here is I had health issues. I used to be a, a, a CPA, so a charter professional accountant, so um, back in the day, I had health issues, mainly around my digestive issues, and um, I tried lots of different things. I did the conventional route, and it was um, the Chinese medicine, the acupuncture, and the Chinese herbal that uh, transformed my health. I'm fine, great now. Health is awesome. And I, was, I found it so amazing that even though I still practice as an accountant, I used to be the controller tax guy for the Ocean Spray Growers here in British Columbia. Um, I decided to go back and do uh, my doctor of traditional Chinese medicine and uh, and, and that's how I got into it. It was my in my health issues, and I was originally doing mostly gut issues, IBS, Crohn's, colitis, constipation, those kind of uh, bloating symptoms was my, what got me interested. But mostly women came to your practice, and when we do Chinese medicine, we always do a holistic perspective. We never just focus on a symptom. So we would do their gynecological intake as well. And as I was treating their digestive issues, they would report how their PMS and their menstrual pain was getting better. So I slowly became known as the PMS guy. <laughs> and then a woman came to me who was doing IVF, in vitro fertilization, and she was traveling from Vancouver to Houston at the time, seeing Randine Lewis. She wrote the book, The, in- the Infertility Cure, 
um, in the way of the Fertile Soul, her two books. And it wasn't um, economical or feasible for her to go from Vancouver to Houston on a weekly basis. So she found me by coincidence, and Rendine became my mentor and uh, guided me in the early days on acupuncture, herbal for treating fertility, and, and, and supporting an IVF. And um, slowly my practice, not slowly, actually quickly my practice built because women would talk. And by 2004, my practice was focusing on reproductive health. So that's how I went from CPA to acupuncture Chinese medicine to focusing on uh, reproductive health. And now it's all hormonal you know, issues, pregnancy, fertility, gynecology, menopause, gut health. And I think what's interesting, you bring up a good point, is that it's sometimes it is other issues that bring women in for women and men uh, in for acupuncture treatments and more looking at the overall body and what's the cause of everything as well too. And and then that brings them to what else can you help me with, including uh, things like fertility and pregnancy. Yeah, and you've probably seen in your practice because we're not chasing symptoms, but always looking for that underlying cause and going after that underlying cause. People will come in with one complaint, but we're treating holistically. So even things they may not have shared with us, they often tell us, hey, this is also getting better, right? And that's because we're treating more of a root issue, the underlying imbalance. And when we do that, everything comes back align, <coughs> align. You know, the whole Chinese philosophy, <coughs> excuse me, is about the, the supporting the body's innate ability to heal. This, your body has this ability to heal. When you get cut, you don't sit there and stare at the cut and say, heal, heal, heal. It does it all on its own, right? But when you get a serious gash, you may get stitches, but the stitches isn't doing the healing. It's creating an environment by bringing the tissue together to support the body and allow it to do its healing. And I always say Chinese medicine is like that. Chinese medicine is just the thread. It helps create an environment in your body to do what it's supposed to do. And we do that by looking under, looking for the underlying cause or what we call the pattern differential diagnosis, supporting, treating that, and then the body's own healing ability takes over, which is what it should be doing, to keep us not only from being sick, but allowing us to feel um, healthy and, by, and vital. And one of the points that you brought up, too, that's really interesting is when we talk a lot about this, you know, everyone thinks Chinese medicine is just acupuncture. And, of course, there's a lot of other modalities and therapies that go along with it. It's its, its own medical system or whole system, uh, which we'll talk a little bit later about how that becomes important in just doing just acupuncture treatments itself. You know, it involves dietary nutrition. It involves exercise like qigong, tai chi. Um, involves Chinese herbal medicine, like you mentioned. And the idea that this bringing of everything back into balance allows that organism to basically function as best as possible is, is truly amazing and, and unique, I think. It also goes along a lot, what you hear on the Dr. Tom Rosal live show, is that the treating the triad of health, which is the structural, biochemical, and mental, emotional, and bringing in all aspects of it, not just treating someone for one particular aspect of their health and healing and watch the other two um, become more of an issue. We're listening live here on the Dr. Tom Rosella live show. If you have any questions and want to give us a call here, feel free to give us a call at 1-888-630-9625. Again, that number is 1-888-630-9625. And we're on the phone with Dr. Lauren Brown from AccuBalance of Vancouver, British Columbia. Lauren, why do you think more people are now coming to you for particularly fertility issues and, you know, whether or not they're coming to you before they're, they're going to conventional medicine IVF treatments, or why do you think you see this, this big surge in the women coming to our practices? Well, I think the Internet helps out a lot because people are talking and sharing what they have done to help themselves, and often it comes up that they've, done, they've gone to see somebody who does Chinese medicine. And, and when I say Chinese medicine, it's the whole system, acupuncture, herbal, diet, qigong, as you mentioned earlier. Um, so that's a big part of it. And people in general, um, um, I think people would prefer uh, a non-pharmaceutical approach or there's a population that definitely wants to not have to take, do things that may be more invasive <clears throat> or have side effects. But in general, in my practice, um, people are doing integrative, and that's what we do. They're combining. They're, doing, they're looking for the best of everything and, and using that to help them with their health. And when it comes to fertility, um, the population I see is they want to use anything and everything that is safe and effective to help them on their journey to, uh, to parenthood. So I think a lot of people, it's not that it's, they're having to choose one or the other. I, if I choose Chinese medicine, then I can't choose conventional or vice versa. I think they're looking for just medicine, and medicine is you know, conventional medicine, drug therapy, it's dietary therapy, it's Chinese medicine, it's herbal, and they're using um, integrative approach, and that's what we're doing in our practice. 
Yeah, and we do something very similar here where we're combining <clears throat> clinical nutrition, uh, the Chinese herbal medicine and, and acupuncture, as well as nutrition and um, the chiropractic care as well as too. And then, you know, I think education is always important key. You mentioned the, the Internet being one of them, but when we do shows like this or we go out to the community and really kind of encourage and empower patients to take a bigger stand in their health, I think it's great when you have people who have specializations in certain areas so they can really answer those questions and understand how do things come together between the Western conventional side and the Chinese, Eastern Chinese medicine side, and they don't have to stand alone, but they can be worked well together. Uh, I think one of the great things with that, too, as well as we're seeing increase in research, which we'll probably get into in the second half of the show, but, you know, there's proof coming back for everybody that says this the combination of these two therapies actually work well together. And that's what a lot of people want to see. Show me the pudding, show me the proof. And essentially we, we have some great studies that have been going back since 1996, 2002, um, all the way up to last year in 2015, which really helped to show that this type of medicine works and can help out in uh, the fertility types of cases. Now, Lauren, I know... And there's oh. one more that came out in 2016, July 2016, the European Society of Human Reproduction and Embryology um, in Helsinki, they um, talked about using um, their study that they were um, that was presented um, talked about acupuncture improving IVF success rate. So um, it keeps continuing uh, to show, and that's probably the other reason why they're seeking out. You know, the the research or the news media comes out and they share um, these studies that are coming out showing acupuncture is supporting IVF success rates, and live birth rates. Yeah, and the amazing thing is both in this area, and I know you do this over in Vancouver as well too, is the fact that we're being invited into uh, fertility centers to not only do lectures and talks and to educate the patients, but actually to do treatments there and to help support them on, you know, on site. And basically that's saying wonders, I think, as well too. Yeah, well, that's integration. So my clinic, AccuBounce, actually got acupuncture on every, um, in all the clinics in British Columbia, um, or Vancouver, I should say, in the Vancouver area, we got acupuncture on site, and we are on site at what's called All the Fertility Clinic. We do lectures to the public um, quite a bit. We talk um, about our patients together, so the patients want that, so we're actually communicating. We're on site there for transfer day, and we also do lunch and learns for the doctors quite often so they can understand what we're doing because they don't always, you know, it's not what they were taught in med school, a lot of the stuff we do. So we share it, and they challenge us, and we look through the research, and we look for a very integrative approach um, for the patients. And part of it is to take the stress away from the patients. You know, the worst thing for a couple or when a woman's going through IVF is your one practitioner is saying this and the other is saying something totally different and they're disagreeing and it puts the stress on the patient to make that decision. So we do that behind the scenes. We sit there, debate, discuss, and then come together with here's what we think is the best um, treatment approach for this patient, looking at both evidence and anecdotal um, information. And uh, and then we, we go as a united team most often for this patient to give them their, their, their success. And success is not just the take-home baby. What we've come to is we want patients to come through this process of the fertility journey whole, not feeling broken, so they come out mentally, physically better than when they started, even if they don't have a baby, because nobody's going to have a 100% success rate when it comes to fertility. There's just so many unknowns and, and variables that we cannot control or change. And what the clinic, um, Olive and, and Acubounce, we wanted to be able to reach a 100% success rate. And so part of that measurement is not just take-home babies, but is the woman, and if there's a man involved, the man, are they healthier both physically and mentally um, because of what we've done for them, even if they don't have the baby, can they go on their life and have that good quality of life? And, and so that's always our approach. Well, as both members of the American Board of Oriental Reproductive Medicine, or ABORM, which is a certification um, that really helps people learn and our practitioners learn and understand that connection between Western and Eastern medicine. You know, they've listed on their website that, you know, acupuncture and, and some of the studies that have come out have shown that it helps to regulate ovulation, the menstrual cycle, re, uh, regulates hormone activity, reduces stress and anxiety, and like you said, enhances success rates of different types of pregnancy procedures. We're going to take a real quick break, and then we're going to come back in just a couple minutes, and we're live on air, and I'm with my guest from Canada, Dr. Lauren Brown.
And welcome back to the Dr. Tom Rizzo Live Show. This is Stephanie Pina live in studio. And we're here to take your questions and talk about some upcoming topics. Uh, we're going to talk about Ageless Health 2016 in just a little bit. But first, we're going to go to the phones uh, along with my caller, Dr. Lauren Brown from Vancouver, British Columbia, who is a licensed acupuncturist. And uh, caller, Pat, how can we help you? Oh, um well, thank you for taking my call. No problem. <laughs> uh, when I heard your topic, I thought, well, I'm 86 years old. I don't think this is for me today. But then when Dr. Brown said bloating and digestive problems, I said, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> that is me. <laughs> so I was calling in about my uh, my bloating. If I eat, I bloat. <laughs> and it takes a long time before I can eat again. And if I eat again... Before, I'm in real trouble, so I've got serious bloating problems. So it sounds like you're kind of experiencing this while you're eating and afterwards? No, I have a... It's not very long, though. After when I can eat... Oh, I don't know. It's not very long until I, I know that I'm starting to bloat and need to, you know, slow down. But I'm hungry and I eat. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's, it's kind of funny. In Chinese medicine, we call that stomach heat, and so it kind of starts to break things down, and we still get hungry and hunger, but then it's got no place to go. So, Dr. Brown, do you want to answer anything with this? Yeah, well, Chinese medicine, it always depends, again, what's the cause of your bloating, right? So um, there's so many reasons why somebody can bloat, but just I'll give a general thing, because without uh, knowing you personally, Pat, and, and done a consult, it's hard to give like specific advice, but I'll, I'll do my best to just give you a, a big picture and where you can go from here is, we see a lot of people with bloating. That was my experience, if you remember. So often it could be the food. Some people just have a food sensitivity. There's a food that they're not tolerating well. Um, and finding out what that food is, which can be done through elimination or doing some food sensitivity testing, um, can help find out what that food is. Remove that trigger, and then the bloating will go away. Simple as that. Um, stress sometimes can impact your digestion and bloating. Um, if you think about it, when you're in this fight or flight, this stress, that's called the sympathetic nervous system, it basically tells your body that reproduction, which, as you said, you're past that, you don't care about that, as well as digestion is not important right now because I may get eaten by the saber-toothed tiger. I need to survive. And so when you're under stress, you're taking away the energy, the, the circulation um, to the gut and going to your heart and your muscles so you can run really fast or fight. And so you want to reduce stress, which engages the parasympathetic nervous system, which is all about regeneration, resting, and digestion. Um, so, you know, if there's foods that you're having a sensitivity to, it creates inflammation. You know, I was just thinking about a woman I was seeing um, recently that had severe bloating and uh, high skin condition. She's been everywhere. They can't figure it out. She's had hives for months. Um, we did a food sensitivity test on her, showed her the top 10 foods that she seems to be reacting to. She took those foods out of her diet. Within four days, the skin cleared up and the bloating's gone. Um, with acupuncture, especially if it's a stress-induced type of bloating, um, then acupuncture, people respond to it like right on the table. They kind of notice it within hours. Um, if it's more of a weakness in digestion, you know, you don't have the good um, acid in your stomach anymore or you're having digestive issues, often we'll combine it, always with diet. We're always playing with your diet in Chinese medicine. We should be, um, but we'll combine it with acupuncture and herbal medicine to support your diet. And we do a little bit of integrated functional medicine. Sometimes we'll add certain digestive enzymes to help you break down the food. You mentioned, I think I heard, Pat's 86. So, yes. you know, when you get to that age, you know, your digestive system, your, your, your chemicals were probably reduced or not as where they were. And so you may need a little bit of support. So seeing somebody who does Chinese medicine or functional medicine, they probably can do some testing. Um, and they can also probably provide some supplements um, and acupuncture to help improve your digestion. My father, by the way, just on a side, funny, he went to his doctor. He's 75, and he said, Doctor, this hurts. You know, this joint hurts. This hurts. I bloat. And his conventional doctor said, um, you know, your 75 warranty's over. Don't come back anymore to my office. Chinese medicine, we think a little bit differently. We want you to be healthy and vital right to the, to the bitter end. So we still think there's things that we can do. We, even though your warranty may be over, we still think there's ways to improve your health. And it always starts with diet and lifestyle and then acupuncture, herbal, and some digested enzymes, in your case, may help. Thank you for calling in, Pat. Um, yeah, I think it's amazing. We also think about the gut, too, is the fact that it can have, it's got its own, you know, 
immune system built into it. And so sometimes even the symptoms that seem so basic, like bloating, can basically be a heads up that there's something else going on and that we have to look at things further than just the digestive tract. And, and obviously in, in Chinese medicine, yeah, like you mentioned, you know, it starts there and then it goes on and it can affect a lot of different uh, conditions and stuff. Well, you know, Stephanie, as you're mentioning, just on the gut part is, I mean, the latest research, which Chinese medicine talks about this thousands of years ago, but the latest research in the last decade is talking about how our gut health can cause, um, poor gut health can cause inflammation. That inflammation can get to the brain, and a lot of the anxiety and depression, they're linking to the gut. And Absolutely. So, you know, and infertility as well. Like, when you see usually somebody does Chinese medicine and functional medicine, we're often quite interested not only in your gynecological health from a hormone balance perspective, um, but we're really interested in your gut health because it's from your gut that, that will will lead out and affect can affect your skin All right. and affect your mood. Hold on to that thought, Lauren. Health. We gotta we gotta go to a break real quick. We'll be back in just a couple minutes. Dr. Tom Rosell Live continues now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. And welcome back to Dr. Tom Rizal Live. This is Stephanie Pina in studio, and I have Dr. Lauren Brown, uh, licensed acupuncturist, on the phone. And I just want to quickly bring up the fact that Ageless Health 2016 is coming up very quickly. That's going to be Thursday night this year on October 13th at the Angelica Movie Center um, in Fairfax, Virginia. And the reason I want to really bring it up is because the early bird special uh, ends on the 31st. So you can always go online uh, at rosellcare.com to sign up for that, or you can Google search uh, Ageless Health 2016. Uh, and don't forget that some of us that you hear on the radio station including myself, will be talking at that on different topics such as uses, en- using energy to heal and strengthen, the power of food to restore health and vitality, saving your brain and nervous system by eliminating the toxic load, never cheating on exercise, and why smoking, uh, sitting is this new, new smoking. So there's going to be a lot of great topics uh, on a Thursday night, like I said, October 16th, uh, 13th, 2006. Uh, check-in is at 4 to 5, and then the presentations start from 5 to 9. Um, so you'll hear more about that as we get closer, but the early bird special ends on August 31st, so hopefully you can come and join myself, Dr. Rizal, and a lot of the guests that you have here on the radio station at that as well, too. We hope to see you there. Uh, if you have any questions you want to call into the radio station now, you can always call us on 888-630-9625. Again, that number is 888 888- Six three zero nine six two five, and we're talking about acupuncture, the way it works on the whole body, the whole system, and especially for fertility, um, since that is one of the specialties of Dr. Lauren Brown. We're going to go to calls real quick. Um, Sarah from Rockville, how can we help you? Hi, thank you for taking my call. I have a question regarding the benefits of sea salt, both in water versus food, in particular, assuming that you're hydrating with plenty of plain water and using sea salt in your food, is that comparable to putting sea salt in your water to obtain the benefits of hydration, minerals, electrolytes, and so on? Excellent question. I think it's uh, you know perfect timing with the fact that, at least here in uh, northern Virginia, we're having quite a warm spell here, so hydration is definitely important, and we tell pretty much all the patients to hydrate as much as you possibly can, but there is a benefit to sea salt, absolutely, and some people will end up using it in their food and in their water both together. Remember when you're using it for cooking or you're using it in food, you're going to lose a little bit of it because it's going to be going in with all those other uh, nutrients and components, so it kind of gets bind up a little bit. So you don't want to make sure that you're using table salt in this area. You want to use the sea salt, which has a higher mineral content. It has a lot higher content of things like magnesium, potassium. It has sodium in there that we see in chloride, like we see in table salt. But essentially, you have other things in there as well too: um, boron, manganese. Those micro minerals, those trace minerals, what they're really doing as far as hydration is they're pulling the water, they kind of attach to the water molecules, and then they pull it into the tissue itself. So instead of that water that we might be drinking a whole lot of and thinking, oh, why am I feeling so tired and weak if it's a hot day and I'm losing, um, I'm perspirating, I'm losing um, things through sweat. Essentially, what's happening is that we can pull those water molecules into the tissues and help hydrate them even more. And a little bit goes a long way. And if you've been listening to the show for a while, you'll know that Dr. Rizal usually recommends about an eighth of a teaspoon uh, or teaspoon for 
um, about a cup to about 16 ounces of water is usually pretty good. So I always tell my patients, you shouldn't taste it. This is not, you're not drinking salt water. You're drinking water with sea salt in it. So that makes a very big difference. But a little bit goes a long way when you can sit there and kind of hydrate the body more than having water pulled out the wrong direction like you do in, in table salts. And that's why you have issues with high blood pressure with that. So most people are going to be safe with using sea salt than, than table salt itself. So excellent question. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, do you think that you should, in general, kind of at this, especially this time of year, put it in every glass of water or drink some plain, some with salt, or is there any rule of thumb for how much to be drinking of that? Um, I think in general you can, you know, it's it's hard to, you know, you don't see people really carrying around little baggies of sea salt. So I think you can do the best as you can. You know, if you're definitely going to go exercise or if you're going to be outside for a long period of time, hydrating with a little bit of the water and sea salt beforehand and then hydrating afterwards as well, especially if you're feeling lightheaded or you haven't had anything to eat, that's certainly going to help kick in a lot quicker. Um, but it doesn't have to be in everything. Other times people are using things like alkalizing their water with um, lemon. Uh, they may be using different types of herbal tea. So they are getting hydration that way. So the main thing is you don't have to worry about carrying around sea salt with you. But when you get a chance to use it, it's certainly beneficial. Lauren, let's kick things back to talking a little bit about acupuncture and fertility. And I know you mentioned uh, one of the studies that was just recently published in 2016 um, that showed that there was a connection and increased pregnancy rates with using acupuncture and IVF. Um, I believe at that same conference, they also talked about the fact that women's perception, uh, perception of acupuncture as helping them with mind and body also had uh, was showed up very positive as well. Is that correct? That is correct. I haven't read the details of the studies, but it was um, more of a meta-analysis. So we were looking at several different studies, and uh, when I looked at the summary, they talked about the mental state as well. And, uh, and, yeah, and that's one of the biggest things is some women will drop out of IVF before they get that take-home baby. So on a separate study, not just looking at it actually increasing the live births, but a study on just because of the um, support that the acupuncturist gave, the women would stay in for an additional IVF where they ended up getting their take-home babies, which is why they are in this. And so just from that perspective of helping on the mental emotional state, it will help women regain that trust and confidence in their bodies to continue on in the IVF process. And then the study I liked um, that came out last year was a Lee Hollander Rubin study where it was called Whole Systems um, Chinese Medicine. And um, what came out of that study is it increased the odds of the live birth rate um, when you use the acupuncture with IVF. <clears throat> but it was one of the first ones where they weren't just looking at acupuncture on transfer day, but they're looking at it leading up to um, the transfer day. And this is important because on transfer day, all we can be impacting is uterine receptivity because the embryo is in a Petri dish um, in the lab, right? And when you're doing the acupuncture leading up to transfer day, so even before they retrieve the egg and, and, and do the uh, insemination with the sperm, we're hoping to impact the ovarian environment to improve um, the egg so it can reach its peak fertility potential. And Lee's study looked at using acupuncture. It was a minimum of 12 treatments, plus it was acupuncture with diet and or herbs and or supplements and or mind body. So it wasn't just acupuncture. So it's kind of how we practice in clinic. We don't just practice as a vacuum in clinic like they do in research. We're using herbs, supplements, diet, mind body techniques. But it shows the dosage. Um, take, you know, just having acupuncture twice before and after embryo transfer um, is a lot of studies out there. But realistically, acupuncture is dosage dependent, and uh, just going a couple times may not be sufficient. It's kind of like somebody that has is overweight or has heart disease. If they just if they did a blood test today, they ate a healthy meal today, and then two weeks later they tested to see if their blood changed. It'd be ridiculous to see any changes. It's, you need to do this repetitively, or you need to exercise over a long period of time. And Chinese medicine is the same thing. You need some time um, for it to take effect. And often we see clinically um, three months of treatment um, to see really good hormonal um, changes. And it makes sense now that we understand the science behind it because the egg goes through this recruitment for a year, and the last three to four months is where big changes happen. So that's probably what we're impacting is the ovarian, ovarian environment, which impacts the egg and if you're treating the guy to sperm so they can reach its peak fertility potential. Yeah, I think you bring up an excellent point, and I see this in our clinic too when, when patients come in for fertility treatments is, you know, you want to help them as much as possible, and, and essentially they'll come to you right before 
they do an IVF cycle and all of a sudden you're going, oh, I wish we'd had them a little bit sooner so we could actually make you know things a little bit stronger and better. And then the, 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 the thing you're seeing more with uh, IVF um, centers too is the fact that they're now delaying that transfer and doing frozen embryo um, transfers later on, months later. So essentially they're stimulating the, the female and then collecting embryos, freezing them and then coming back. So the idea that they're going to be better off if they come back later and they don't have as much hormone stimulation. So from an acupuncture standpoint, we can go in there, help them with the side effects of some of these medications, get their body strong enough and as strong as possible to kind of continue with that pregnancy. So when they go back in, do some of the um, the points and procedures that they talk about in these lab protocols when they go to transfer the embryos back and then essentially make sure that they're going to have a, a healthy pregnancy. And like you mentioned, the goal isn't just a live baby. I always tell the goal is also so that that, that baby can also have their own child as well too so making sure that the generations keep passing on yeah it's always about that healthy baby approach right and so we're trying to help the man and the woman get to their um, a healthy state um, as, as much as possible and it's kind of that epigenetic effect meaning that um, Chinese medicine talks about what you do now um, impacts not only your next generation but two or three generations and conventional medicine uh, they're showing that you know what what your your state is at the time of conception, the man and the woman impacts the next generation. So they're starting to see that now. Again, Chinese medicine talked about this two thousand years ago. Science can now say that uh, what we're doing, basically, what we're trying to do with Chinese medicine, um, is um, impact the health blueprint of your future child. Right. So their risk of cardiovascular disease, cancer, diabetes, depression, obesity. These are things that we're trying to help. So. You know, to create life, it's it's massive. It's a huge undertaking. And technology, I started practice in 2000. Where IVF is today in 2016, late 2016 in 2000, it's night and day. They can do so many wonderful things. So this is great. Technology is really allowing people to have babies. And then our role, again, is we want to help with that health blueprint of this future child and help increase their chances of an IVF success. And some people know when they're working with us, you've seen this in your practice, Stephanie, we're working with them three to six months preparing for an IVF. They conceive naturally, and that's nice as well. Absolutely. And the fact that, like we mentioned earlier, that we're talking about for acupuncture with the use of fertility really can, some of these same principles, you know, as far as hormone balance, when we have women who are coming in with menopausal symptoms, when we have, um, basically we're working with adrenal health and dealing with how people are dealing with stress and how that might be affecting the rest of their body or even the immune system, how the, how is their gut handling things, how are they responding. All of this can be treated with acupuncture, nutrition, dietary herbs, um, and but really the great thing is it's an individualized approach because you really want to see what's going on with that person when they come in and then come up with that short-term and long-term goal um, for their overall health concerns. We're going to take a quick call from Joe uh, from Annandale. Joe, how is our, how's everything going? Okay. Um, I'm a 64-year-old male um, diagnosed with contact dermatitis. I apologize if this is maybe off topic, uh, but was uh, prescribed uh, 20 milligrams of prednisone, P-R-E-D, S-O-N, three tablets a day for five days, and it it didn't seem to work. It uh, went away for a while, and now it's back, and I just was wondering, is there anything anything you might be able to suggest? Absolutely. Um, Unfortunately, one of the common treatments for any kind of inflammation, which is that dermatitis, that inflammation on the on the skin, um, is to basically kind of give an anti-inflammatory, and, and prednisone tends to be one of the heavy hitters and works well in certain situ- certain situations. But unfortunately, it's not specific enough, um, especially when you have a, a diagnosis like contact dermatitis. We have to figure out again. We got to go back to the cause. What is it that made this area flare? Why is it not healing well? With the medications that we're talking about with prednisone, it just is simply there to kind of block that immune system. And just turning off the immune system doesn't mean that you've treated the cause. Uh, Dr. Brown, do you want to chime in on this? Yeah, and same thing. If if you're on the prednisone, so it's going after just the symptoms. So, again, I'm just... I like the idea of medicine. It is an approach. So uh, it is an approach you can use. It can often, for people, give them symptom relief. There are side effects to prednisone, so it's not um, a great drug that you want to have to be on your whole life, but some people have to be. Um, There are alternatives. So in Chinese medicine, we would look at the underlying cause. Um, 
we would use diet for sure, herbal and acupuncture to try and reduce the um, inflammation and, uh, and, and, and heal this underlying condition. I will let you and the listeners know, if you're on a drug like prednisone and you start to see another healthcare provider, there's often rebound when you stop that drug. So it's not necessarily that the new treatment isn't working. As soon as you stop a drug like prednisone, it's often rebound and the symptoms will come back and come back quickly. Um, and so there is a period where you're off that drug that you need to kind of wait out while you're doing the new treatment because it, no, it's been my experience you will not see improvement right away when you stop prednisone and you're doing the acupuncture herbal and diet. Actually, your symptoms will get much worse. It's not the new treatment. It's the rebound effect from stopping prednisone. So prednisone is one strategy to help with inflammation, but it's just like turning off the fire alarm. The fire is still on in the house. You just, you just took up the battery so you don't hear the alarm. There's still something underlying causing this inflammation, you're just not aware of it anymore. The Chinese medicine approach is, rather than taking the, uh, the battery out of the fire alarm, let's go find where this fire is, let's look for the smoke, find the fire, and let's put it out. Absolutely. And the fact, too, that we know that prednisone, as it affects the immune system, it can also really play with the adrenals, which mm-hmm. essentially is our chronic stress fighters, and we know that those are pretty much stressed all, all the time anyway. So, um, so thank you, Joe, for calling in. Um, we're going to basically have to cut to a break in just a couple of seconds here, but I do want to say that there's some interesting kind of things that are coming up that other acupuncturists have done in the field of fertility that is taking into consideration uh, the mind-body approach too. And I'm going to give you a list of those resources when we get back in just a minute, but knowing that acupuncturists are thinking about not just where we put those needles, but essentially how to take care of your overall health and wellness and treating the cause is going to be one of the main takeaway points. We'll be back in just a couple of moments. 105.9 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. And welcome back to Dr. Tom Russell Live. We are live in studio, taking your questions and calls and talking with Dr. Lauren Brown, who is on the phone from Vancouver, British Columbia, who is a licensed acupuncturist and also clinical hyper... Um, <laughs> What are you again, Lauren? <laughs> Clinical hypnotherapist. There you go. I was in that zone, like you must have done something on the break. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's what's going on here. Um, so, essentially, we're going to give you some uh, resources, too, that I always think is really good for anyone in the public and the patients to know um, that I often send my patients home with that kind of talks a little bit about what we're doing, but on a, a downscale level so that it's very understandable, but also treats a number of different or addresses a number of different aspects of Chinese medicine and the way fertility kind of links together. Um, and then I'm going to let Lauren uh, finish it off, too. Is uh, But one of the great things is that there's more and more acupuncturists actually putting books out there. Um, Lauren mentioned Randy Lewis, who originally put out The Infertility Cure, um, essentially, you know, I tell everyone to kind of look at that one because it, under, it helps explain where we're coming from as acupuncture. So patients are in the public is on key with what we're talking about terminology wise. They understand some of the things that we're looking at from an observational standpoint, like basal body temperatures, uh, cervical mucus, what does temperature taking have to do with fertility to begin with? Um, there's another great book um, that recently actually came out by Janie White, who's another fertility uh, acupuncturist in London, uh, called The Fertility Fizz, which really had to deal with how do you keep the fizz in trying to become pregnant and fertility. And, and it's a different approach. It's definitely a fun book to read, so it's, it's worth picking up. And then also there's a nutrition book out there that came out, I believe, 2014. It hasn't been out too long by Emily Bar- uh, Bartlett and Lauren Enrock called Feed Your Fertility, which is an excellent source for any um, questions on types of foods that work towards fertility, towards increasing blood flow, um, really getting in the best shape possible from a nutrition standpoint. Um, Lauren, anything else you want to add on that list um, that might be good for um, patients or the public to take a look at? Yeah, um, we often um, refer to a clinical hypnotherapist uh, as well, um, and I like James Schwartz's book, The Mind-Body Fertility Connection. So I often, we have a lending library, so we often lend that book out. Um, again, that book's called The Mind-Body Fertility Connection by James Schwartz, and if they resonate with that, then we um, we encourage them to see one of our local um, hypnotherapists that's done some training with fertility. I'm a clinical hypnotherapist myself. I don't practice it anymore. I used to in the practice, and it was a lot of fun, and, and patients uh, received it well. So that would be the book I would recommend. It's an easy read, and uh, if it resonates with you, then uh, um, you can you can either contact me through AccuBalance um, or just do some searches for people that are doing clinical hypnotherapy for fertility. Absolutely. Oh, 
One more resource, Bell Ruth Napperstack. That's a mouthful. She has guided imagery online. Um, so I like that as well. There's a couple of guided imageries for fertility. Circle and Bloom and, Gu- and Bell Ruth Napperstack have um, specific um, guided imagery for fertility as well, which we play in our clinical treatment rooms while people are having acupuncture. And we call it hypnopuncture because <laughs> they're getting <laughs> acupuncture and, while, and they're listening to uh, self-hypnosis while they're in the rooms. And, again, people go deep and they really like that. Yeah, I think that aspect of the treatments really doesn't get to, you know, when you're going into the IVF clinics and you're, everything is basically monitored by everyone else and they're kind of in charge and stuff, it's really easy to get lost in the shuffle and kind of feel that sense of stress and who's there for me. So I think that's a great spot um, and great resources too for um, patients who are looking into this, especially if they're planning ahead so they can be as prepared as possible. And also those that are currently going through it too that want to know how they can basically help out with their pregnancy rates, how they can help out with that hormonal trans- transition or essentially some of the side effects that they have been kind of told about as well, too. Um, also, I want to thank, and, and most people wouldn't know this, but uh, Lauren is actually the person who created, I'll say, and is the chair of um, the Integrative Fertility Symposium, which is uh, yearly in Vancouver, British Columbia. Um, I had the great pleasure of going to the first annual one where he brings in some of these people that are the heavy hitters, um, essentially, in this field. And so I want to thank his expertise today for being on the phone with me, for, for putting up with us. Thank you, Lauren. I hopefully we'll have you back. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm happy that you thought I had something good to say for your listeners, so I appreciate the uh, call to do this. Absolutely. Um, we're going to be live. Don't forget to sign up for uh, Ageless Health 2016, and uh, we're going to be back next week. I'm going to have Dr. Lamp on live, and we're going to talk about chronic pain management and essentially hope everyone has a healthy and happy weekend. See you next time. Are you dental phobic? Do you neglect your dental health because of fear and anxiety? A beautiful smile begins with exceptional dental care, and you can trust in the expertise of Soft Touch Dental Care and Dr. Michael Chung. Soft Touch Dental Care is unlike any dentist office you'll ever experience. Their warm and welcoming environment is designed to soothe fears and anxiety the moment you arrive, and they're especially pleased to pamper their honored guest patients. Dr. Michael Chung is a professional and leading expert in all areas of comprehensive dentistry, including cosmetic, sedation, neuromuscular, TMJ, and implant dentistry. Offering state-of-the-art technology, Dr. Chung can give you the smile of your dreams. Arrange for a complimentary consultation today with Dr. Michael Chung and experience the expertise that makes Dr. Michael Chung so unique. Call 703-319-6990. That's 703-319-6990. Or visit bestinsmile.com. That's bestinsmile.com. This is Dr. Tom Rosell, author of Ageless Health. Health is a do-it-yourself program. My book, now also available in audio version, is a step-by-step program of how to take control of your health and wellness without drugs or needless surgery. You have the capacity to change your health and level of well-being. Take control of your health today and order Health Is a Do-It-Yourself Program. For more information and to order, please visit agelesshealthbook.com. That's agelesshealthbook.com. 